Nintendo. Ah yes, Animal Crossing, a game franchise that everyone knows. Animal Crossing, or Debuts in Amore, was created for the Nintendo 64 on April 14, 2001, which was then released on GameCube and then ha got several new releases on several different consoles. For many, this game franchise has been a fun and exciting experience over the years, me included. Though, for many, there is one some may not remember. Today, I will be talking about the history and my thoughts of a forgotten and unheard of version of Animal Crossing. Today, I will be talking about Animal Crossing Wild World. I'm your host, Casual NDS. To begin with Animal Crossing Wild World, I will have to talk about its origin. May 14, 2004, gamers alike were greeted to a new title for an Animal Crossing game on the DS. By August 1st, we were given the name of the project, Animal Crossing DS. Really original, guys. Really original. We also got a small video and a few pictures of a demo of what would then be Animal Crossing Wild World. Needless to say, the video isn't the best quality. It sounds like it's coming out of a camera powered on by potato batteries. Other than that, the other thing we did receive in 2004 was a sign that it would be coming out in 2005. By 2005, more images and another video were given to us to show a more updated look for Wild World. We also got a small interview from Katsuya Iuguchi about what they had in mind for the game. From the cutting floor, it summarizes, the next Animal Crossing installment in mind was planned to have multiplayer support and expanded customization from the beginning. The characters that were selected for this installment were the most popular from the previous game, but new ones were also created to balance it out. When IGN asked Katsuya Iuguchi about the lack of NES games, he responded that it sort of took players away from the adventure, and preferred to focus on living in the Animal Crossing world. A rolling log effect was added to represent the sky that is seen on the top screen, so it can be interacted with players such as a balloon present. Apart from that interview and the showing at E3 2005, that is kinda it for the development of Animal Crossing Wild World. Now with the history of Wild World's development out of the way, I want to talk about my experience on how I found out about Animal Crossing Wild World. Now, for context, I don't have the greatest memory. When I first got my original DS, I didn't have any games for it. My theory is, I went online somewhere and found out about Animal Crossing Wild World. Funny enough, the way I got my cartridge of the game was from my friend's mom, Driptarts' mom. That's also where I told Driptarts this strange message. Dude, your mom gave me Animal Crossing! Not kidding, Driptarts! Oh, and I have the same game coming on the way. Do you want it? I mean, it does have multiplayer, and it is for the yes, and it's so good! And from there, I made Booya, my town. After a while, I made a bunch of different Booyahs. In one, I made a lot of money. In another, I just didn't play at all. Then came Gnarly. Gnarly is the town I still play on today. Back when I first made it, I did create a few TikToks about it. Each being very cringy. It's supposed to be a update to my TikTok video I made already on Animal Crossing Wild World. As I clearly said, I would make it on a YouTube video and send a link in the chat. I never did it because um, my camera quality sucked, but... Um... <sighs> legit had no clue how to make videos. But without those videos, I'd never have the thought of the concept of this video. So I at least gotta thank them for that. A thing I do also want to add is that with my time with Animal Crossing Wild World has made me only really play Wild World and not any other version of Animal Crossing. And you've just no, I like it. This is brilliant, <laughs> but I like this. 
Another reason I wanted to talk about this topic was also how mysteriously there really isn't many people talking about Animal Crossing Wild World anymore. Now yes, it's a game that came out in 2005, but many people seem to talk more on City Folk than they do Wild World. And with that, that is the history of how I got into Animal Crossing Wild World. Now with talking about my history, and the history of Wild World's release, it's time to talk about what the game added for the franchise. Well, the most important things span from new villagers, hat and face cosmetics, all new music, fish, bugs, and new holidays. Now, for some people who play New Horizons, I'm sorry to say, Wild World does not have regular holidays like Christmas or Thanksgiving. No, we have the Acorn Festival, La Di Day, Yay Day, and the Flower Festival. Nintendo also added, which may just be one of the greatest things in Wild World. To me, it is one of the most realistic and nostalgic attributes to the game. The Roost is a simple, small coffee shop and a museum in every Wild World town. For 200 bells, you can buy a cup of coffee and talk to Brewster for a short time. The more you come in for coffee, the more he talks to you and will remember your usual order for coffee. Throughout the day, if you're lucky, you'll see old characters from Animal Crossing, like Rover or Cap'n, sitting at the cafe. Also, every week at 8pm on Saturday, KK Slider will play a song for you and give you a bootleg to take home. Anyways, I need to stop ranting about this place and talk more about what Nintendo added. Other than the roost, Nintendo did add new buildings, like inside Nookington, there's a hair salon called the Shampoodle. There is now a checkpoint for players to make multiplayer lobbies. The town hall replaced the post office, wishing well, and dump from Animal Crossing, allowing for players to mail letters, deposit and withdraw their bells from a savings account, pay their home loan, access the recycling bin, view town's environment rating, and change the town tune. The observatory is located on the second floor of the museum and allows players to create constellations that can be seen in the night sky. And of course, we can't forget about the sky, which we get a whole screen to like Katsuya Iguchi said we would. It has a full cycle of day and night and a full cycle of the moon. Lastly, Nintendo added an important update towards something special, which was... An update to flowers. <laughs> I'm probably missing a few bug changes or some small updates from the GameCube version, but I feel these updates are the most known and important in Wild World. Animal Crossing Wild World is a game that I can remember fondly from 2020. I can still just pick up and play today and have the greatest time. To me, I wish everyone in the world could play this game. I mean, it's like... 20 bucks online. But the thing is about this game is, well, it feels like my childhood. Its music makes me happy to walk and run around, say hi to a few friends, drink some coffee at Brewster's, and live my life in a town full of low poly animals. To me, I hope everyone gets a chance to play Wild World and experience the game the same way I did in 2020. Now, many people won't be as into the game as me because I'm a crazy lunatic. But I still hope to get people knowing of a game that some may not remember. I know many people from the early 2000s have fond memories of this game and will create content on YouTube and talk about it. But I want this game to be more in a spotlight today and be more known and played. To me, I feel Animal Crossing Wild World is the Mario Kart Super Circuit of the Animal Crossing series. So please, give it a try. I hope you'll like it. Well, that sure was a lot, wasn't it? Well, before we go, I need to thank a bunch of people. First, I have to thank JVGS Jeff for their videos throughout my video, Much Games for their video at the start of my video, and thank you to all who watched throughout this video. Now, it may not look like a much for a 10 minute video, but this video took me more than a month to fully write the script, record my lines, and edit my way through this video. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. I'm happy to answer them. I swear, this video is about to make my head explode. What the f- 
Anyways, thank you so much. Casual NDS out. Just kidding. Didn't you guys want some bloopers? Cosmetics, all new music, fish, bugs, and... Really? Now? Now with talking about both the history of Wild World's release and my history with the game, it's time to talk about what... Ah! Uh, <laughs> Now with talking about both the history of Wild World release and my history with the game. My history of the game. The Roost is a small, simple coffee shop. Oh my oh, I I had it. I, I was so I was doing so well. Oh And oh you now you ground at me? Now you ground at me? Mm-hmm. 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 I gotta take a photo of you. Bothering me. Hey, future NDS here. I need to stop ranting about this place and talk more on what Nintendo added, or I swear to god, I can't finish this video. Anyways, back to where we needed to be. Hi, future NDS here. Due to this chapter pretty much being Wild World's additions to the Animal Crossing franchise, I can no longer rant about the roost. Anyways, back on to your regularly scheduled program. By 2005, however, more images and another video were given to us to show a more updated look for Wild World. We got a small interview from Katya Iuguchi about what- oh, right. An expans expanded- mm. By 2005, more images and another video were given to us to show a more updated look for Wild World. We also got a small interview from Katya Iuguchi about what they had in mind for the game. The from the cutting mm. Ah! Oh, I was so close. Harry. What is it? The uh, stuff that dreams are made of. Huh? 